Control Talk now, your Smart Buildings podcast and video cast for the week ending May 3rd, 2015. My name is Eric Stromquist, and I'm your host for Control Talk Now, where we talk about controls and smart buildings and try to give you control news that you can use. I am joined, as usual, by my co-host, the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only, Kenny Smyers. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Kenny, welcome to the show, Big Dog. Well, thank you, Eric. It's great to get that jolt of enthusiasm. It's a beautiful day here in, uh, in Pittsburgh. It's, it's 10 o'clock and it's like 70 degrees, so it's amazing. We finally transitioned into early summer, and I love it. And well, uh, I got I got to tell you, Kenny, if anybody ever questions your dedication after the winter you had in Pittsburgh, 70 degrees at 10 o'clock, and you're doing a show with me instead of being out on the golf course. I tell you what, for our industry out there, our control trends community, that is is the definition of dedication because Kenny Smyers is quite the golfer. Buddy, you hadn't had much time to play this year, have you? Uh, no, I haven't. And, uh, you know, I'm, I can hang in there. But uh, the, the, the big thing why I won't be golfing is that we're going to uh, – my daughter's into town, both in one – Sabrina from California, Stephanie from uh, Connecticut. Uh, they're here for a wedding, family wedding, so we're looking forward to that later on this afternoon. Very uh, what cool. about you in Georgia? What's going on down there? Well, you know, I got the two kids, man. You know, it's like uh, I am really learning the concept of synergy, which uh, the new definition is one kid plus two kids do not equal – I mean, one kid plus another kid does not equal two kids. Uh, it's exponential, man. It is totally exponential what they can do together. So uh, loving, loving being a dad again for our listeners out, out there who might not know. Uh, Evelyn Grace, my daughter, is two and a half. We just had a little boy uh, a month ago, Axel Banks. So uh, we're re- wheeling and dealing with that. And it's great, dude. It, 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 it's awesome. And uh, But, uh, hey, you know what? It's kind of good to get locked up in the studio here because I got the Do Not Disturb sign out there. But Guess what? I'll probably be disturbed because if a diaper needs to be changed, she will not hesitate to knock on the door and ask for my help, which is no problem. So if we have to stop off the show for a minute, I, I guarantee you, man, I am a, I'm a diaper changer. And, and for our, our, our people that are into green and all, Scott Cochran informed me that uh, you're not a real dad unless you can use one wipe to clean a poopy diaper. Uh, so I've been working on that. There's a trick to it. And Scott Cochran, if you're listening, man, I, I'm going to save the environment, man, one wipe at a time. So... Uh, <laughs> I'm proud of you, Eric. I'm proud of you. You're, so, you're- yeah, we're well, rock and roll. But Kenny, I tell you, a big deal. We're getting a lot of comments. Uh, we posted last week, Mark Goodman, uh, uh, with the Brian Rose interview on London Real. And boy, we're getting a lot of feedback on that. And uh, uh, break it down real quick. You did such an eloquent job last week talking about it. But uh, give our listeners who might not have seen last week's show sort of the highlights. Well, I, we, we came across, uh, you know, we're doing the internet uh, cybersecurity and we're working with Fred Gordy to really truly take an in-depth look and really provide, you know, valuable information and insight to how big and how, how problematic the situation is and how exposed many of our, our building control systems are. And uh, remarkable numbers, 2.2 million SCADA systems and BACnet systems are, are exposed on the internet at the, at the present time, according to a sub, study done by Shodan. Uh, so you keep pulling this uh, security string and all of a sudden you come across a name like Mark Goodman. And, uh, you know, we posted the real um, London Real Brian Rose interview with Mark Goodman last week. So I did a little bit more research, went on his website and started reading about just what this guy is and what he's all about, where he came from. You know, he came from uh, the Los Angeles Police Department and he was a, a cop, basically. Uh, he's a good guy. He's a white hat. And uh, I mean, but he's gone through the deep rigors of learning the basic uh, understanding all the way up to becoming a, a prominent uh, expert, and uh, he has been briefing. He's been busy. He's been uh, working in the information warfare uh, organizations uh, with the Interpol, uh, United States, United Nations, NATO, and and uh, uh, you know police departments around the, the world because this is a global problem. These are global policies that have to be implemented. Not just North America. Not just American uh, companies are exposed or utility grids. It's the world. And uh, we had an interesting. Uh, there's an interesting book out there called Phantom. It goes into a you know artificial intelligence going south, going wrong, going dark, you know, and uh, this is a true source of information. The guy is very generous, and uh, he really believes in what he's doing. He's helping people out. Well, I think the thing that uh, that sort of got my attention, Kenny, is, is Goodman says that most of the uh, a lot of the hackers. I mean, it is very very organized, and and you know, our people in our industry, we talk about the concept of leverage all the time, right? And so you know, you, as you said last week. Uh, you know, if you're a criminal, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of an interesting career, right? So you go you get to set your own hours, you work when you want to, unlimited resources. There's some risk to it, obviously, if you get caught. 
And as Mark sort of laid it out, I mean, originally with crime, it was like, you know, sort of a one-on-one type thing, right? You know, I, I, I jump you in an alley and uh, take your wallet. So, you know, so how did you leverage that? Well, I think he said the first leverage point came when they figured out they could ro- rob trains and then after that banks, right? So you're taking the same risk for a bigger reward. But now he's saying that uh, with, with, uh, with cyber terrorism and, and the hacking, and what goes on with that is it's like it's exponential what they do. And he says a lot of these criminals have bigger budgets, R&D budgets, uh, than, than most Fortune 500 companies. So they are serious about it. They're organized about it. Uh, he, you know, he talks about the fact that uh, they're more interested in iPhone than you are. So, yeah, and Fred Gordy had alluded to this, and, and we'll be talking more about it. So I can't wait to hear what Fred has to say about the Mark Goodman interview. But, uh, but it got me thinking, Kenny, because as you know, I've got a Tesla, right? It's an all electric car, so I've got to get in it the other day, man. And uh, the way Tesla updates their stuff, they don't go change the engine; they upload the software. So I go to get in it one day, won't start. Thing comes on, we're updating your software. So it got me thinking, man, you know, I could get hacked. I could be driving down the road and get hacked, you know. And, and you remember that, remember that uh, our listeners out there, there's a show called Silicon Valley on, on Showtime, right? And the guy's in the Google car, right? And the Google car, yeah. the Google car is going to give him a ride home. Well, anyway, it, I don't think it got hacked, but it starts going in another direction, right? So this guy winds up on the other side of the world. So I'm sort of envisioning being in the Tesla and all of a sudden, uh, something gets hacked or downloaded and, and now I'm being driven to, uh, uh, you know, Texas or something like that. So it's, it, it's compelling and it's interesting. And, uh, a lot of conversation about this. Encourage you, if you didn't get a chance to see that, uh, that interview last week, be sure to check it out. All right. So Kenny, uh, you know, it's kind of cool. The other trend we've been tracking is wearable technology. I understand buddy that you've got a new toy. Uh, this is my first experience with wearable technology. I have an iPhone and of course, and all that stuff, but nothing like a, the instance you're having with Tesla, where you can be hijacked. But this is my first, ver- you know, step into wearable technology. Uh, it's a Microsoft band. I got it at the CGNA uh, meeting last last week. Uh, Bruce Heron from Robert Shaw put it into the uh, CGNA raffle basket, and I got my name pulled, nice. and I'm wearing it. So I'm just trying it out. I really wouldn't have not, probably never would have bought it, but it's an incredible concept. I mean, here's the uh, the actual you know faceplate, which the display looks like. You have sensors on both sides of the, the watch so or the uh, wristband. It is a watch. It is a calendar. It gives you telephone notifications and calendar notifications, but it senses things. So it tells you how many steps you've taken. It tells you how many wa- miles you've walked, calories burnt. And then uh, one of the neat things is it tells you how you sleep. You can monitor your sleep. If you actually sleep well or don't sleep well, uh, this thing tells you uh, how well you slept, how many hours you slept uninterrupted, how many times you woke up. And then what your total uh, calories burnt, and then uh, what your percentage of sleep is. So I've had good ones like 88 and then 72. Nice. Because it's just, you know, I don't know if I like it or not, because I'm sure it could be hacked as well. Well, it might be able to. And, and I tell you, wearable technology is a trend we're talking, you know, we've been, we've been uh, tracking here on Control Trends. And, and that's a really cool piece, Kenny. I know my family, somebody get me a, maybe an Apple Watch for my birthday. And, and I guess Ken and I really think that, uh, like Google Glasses, I understand that, you know, they have stopped making the glasses, but Kenny and I think smart glasses like that that have the cameras built in are the way that people can really leverage up their service operations. So if you know of a company that makes really cool glasses, smart glasses like the Google Glasses, we're interested because we've got customers that uh, maybe have 100 technicians and, and they can put their smartest guy back at headquarters in front of a bunch of screens and he can, uh, the rest of them go out with the, the smart glasses and, and he can help them troubleshoot. We, we put a video up uh, probably six months ago. They're using the oil industry already, but uh, with Google getting out of that, uh, we need to find another source. So if you happen to know of somebody that makes good glasses that we could, uh, we, we could hook up with, we want to know about that for sure. So, Kenny, I mean, wearable technology is here to stay. Uh, it's just what, what form it's going to take. But, uh, hey, dude, I tell you what, we got, we got a big show today. We got a really, really big show. We got two guests. We have Jim Young coming on in a few minutes from Realcom Ibicon and Ken Sinclair from AutomatedBuildings.com. So, buddy, I think, I, think, I think we need to break it down. Let's get started. What will we have up first this week? Well, the first uh, item, uh, Eric, is uh, probably uh, one of the most important messages we can get across to the control tenants community. It's the Realcom IBCOM. Real change right now. Welcome to the future. Uh, This is a June 9th through the 10th event to be held at the Marriott River Center in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Precon begins June 8th. And I'll tell you what, this is probably the premier 
uh, event of the industry where real uh, where real estate meets intelligent buildings and all the people that that affects. And of course, that affects us largely because we're in the HVAC equipment uh, business. Uh, our secure our systems integrators, our distributors, everybody in the control tones community needs to be here. And we have a special offer that you can tell a little bit later on. Yeah. If, uh, we get people motivated and they sign up. But the conference highlights are the – you probably have uh, the biggest, most influential people in all aspects of the business, whether it's real estate, uh, the commercial worlds, the, the manufacturing worlds, the vendors' worlds. Uh, it's three days of world-class education and networking, over 1,400 professionals in one location. So, I mean, you talk about exponential networking. Uh, leading ed- educational program featuring over 75 sessions and 150 speakers – uh, the emerging technologies, you know as well as I know that this thing caught our attention and, and we've never let go. If you want to know what's happening in the world of, of our business, you know, what's going to be the technologies that affect moving air and water through buildings, uh, you know, maximizing your efficiencies, whether it's if energy or operational efficiencies, this is the place to go to. And uh, yeah. I could go on forever and ever. They have uh, you know, I could too, Kenny. And, and I, I just got to put it, in a, put it in perspective too because you did a great job with that. But we went, our first one was two years ago, man. You know, and you and I have been, you know, we're a little bit older, in case you didn't guess, but we've been in the industry for over 30 years. Let's put it that way. Dude, I have never been to a conference that's more beneficial and, and the knowledge and all. So, you know, day one, you know, we got to cover for JMO. We're covering it again this year, so we'll be out there. But uh, day one was the pre-con boot camp. And what it was was real estate professionals that have been down the technological path that are, um, uh, you know, farther down the path, educating. Other real estate professionals that maybe are not that far down or want to know about the latest and greatest technologies. And I tell you, Kenny, the information that they were sharing with each other was spot on. I mean, one of the first things they said is your system has to be open. And what blew me away was these guys understood that open just didn't mean the protocol like BACnet or whatever. That was a piece of it. But open meant you had multiple choices for people to work on it. And I remember a particular vendor stand up and said, well, we're open. And these guys shouted and bounced and said, you're not open. I mean, if you can't have multiple people work on the, our system or multiple places for buy, you're not open. So it's just that level uh, of intelligence. And the people that are there from the real estate side are there because they are interested in uh, improving their building. So let's put this in perspective. Where else can you go? Network with the greatest technology because the vendors are there with the products. Learn about the greatest products and also have potential customers right there that you are sitting side by side with. It's the best value, I say, that you could possibly get in the industry. But I tell you what, Kenny, uh, you know, I could go on like this forever too, but we have the privilege of having Jim Young with us. And Jim, along with his partners, Howard Berger and others, founded RealCom Ibicon, which is uh, where real estate and technology meet. And I say Jim stands right square at that intersection. Uh, we dub him the prophet. Because, uh, you know, we met him a couple of years ago in San Diego. He began to tell us things that were going to happen, and they've been happening. As a matter of fact, you can go on his website. He's got an article from 2002, which he predicted the uh, smart building evolution way before anybody, you know, uh, had any idea what was going on with that. So with that, Kenny, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first guest, Mr. Jim Young from RealCom. Jim, welcome to the show. Welcome, Jim. Hey, great to be here. Virtually. Man, it is so great to have you on. You know, Ken Smyers and I refer to you as the prophet in our industry. I tell you what, if we go back to a couple of years ago, uh, we had coffee in San Diego, which is really a highlight for Ken and myself. And uh, you made some predictions back there, and, and they seem to be coming true. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start off uh, with, you know, something you sort of predicted was the backward sort of integration thing. And there's a big thing in the industry that, that happened a couple of weeks ago. C.B. Richard Ellis bought... Uh, both ESI, a major systems integrator, and uh, part of Johnson Controls. Uh, I think that was on your radar back then. And, and uh, talk a bit, about, a bit about that, if you would, Jim. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, if you think about what's going on, uh, we're moving from early adopters. Well, actually, if you look at the innovation um, uh, paradigm, it goes from innovator, the person in the garage, to the early adopter, your best friends who are willing to take a risk on you, uh, something happens, you jump this thing called a chasm, and you go from early adopter to early majority. And then once you hit that early majority, you go straight through the roof, and you, then you hit late majority and lagger. So what that tells me is any idea, a wheel, a toaster, a refrigerator, a smart building, is going to go through a process, right? So 
you say we're prophets, but it's just we study this. We do this every day, so we have access to a lot of information. We can kind of see the clouds forming to know, you know, what the, what the weather is going to look like. So, as far as CBRE and uh, and ESI, think about it. You know, Paul. You know ESI, one of the finest integrating integrator companies in the country, if not the world, has a good background in traditional building automation. Made the switch five, ten years ago to understand that IT needed to be part of the equation, brought in some people who understood IT and IP in this new network world, not building automation, but you know, IT, and as a result of that, started to take a different perspective and could start to execute things that other people could not, right? So you got this, this stealth little PT boat that, that really is the top of their game. Now you got CB Richard Ellis, CBRE, big company, global presence. Usually those kind of companies can't move fast, right? They're mired in bureaucracy and and, 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 and just all sorts of people stuck in their ways. But i got to give them a lot of credit, right, because they are the battleship. They see these things coming, and they say, look, we can't build this inside. We need some expertise. So you got the execution capacity of somebody like an ESI put right into the middle of a company that can distribute these ideas on a global basis. That means we're getting ready to scale to more of the early adopters moving to the early majorities. That tells me this industry is moving in the right direction. All right, Jim, uh, many of the uh, people in the, in the control trends community are systems integrators, and we deal with them day-to-day -day basis, and they come to the, our, our site a lot for information. Uh, how will this affect them? What, what can they expect in terms of changes? Let's take a step back. So let's talk about the definition of a smart building, okay, because you know, some people think it's all about energy. Uh, some people think it's all about you know, the way a tenant accesses their, their door. There's, you asked 100 people their definition of a smart building, you're going to get 100 different answers. So our definition, from the very beginning, going back to that article we wrote in 2002 called Connecting Buildings and Processes to the Internet, which was really kind of a precursor to M2M, which is the precursor to the Internet of Things, right? So, so to those of us who've been in the industry, this Internet of Things is not a new thing, okay? It's the co connection of every electrical mechanical device in a building, IP-enabled, to an enterprise-grade network. That's simple. That, that's the technical side of it. But a smart building connected, high-performance, intelligent, whatever we're going to call it, needs to deal, what we think, five different things. It needs to be energy efficient. That's your driving energy efficiency. It also needs to deal with operations. You can't leave that one off the table. One truck roll versus three saves you a lot of money, a lot of money. In fact, some people speculate the operational savings is going to be even more than the energy savings. Okay? The third thing we got to do is make sure that our occupants are happy. Oh, I got the smartest, most intelligent building in the world, but oh, guess what? Their cell phones don't work. Wait a minute. My cell phone doesn't work in major hotels in Las Vegas, resorts in Palm Springs, buildings in New York City. Wait a minute. The cell phone companies put their infrastructure outside, and we got one bar inside? Wait a minute. That's not a smart building. So everything from making sure cell phones work to making sure the buildings are safe and secure, the occupant experience has to be there. Uh, the next thing that we got to do is apply all this to a sustainability objective. So many sustainability leadership or executive leaders don't understand that uh, applying a smart building strategy to, uh, to their strategy, they can meet all of their sustainability objectives. What we're finding in the sustainability world, however, is this stuff is a little complex and sometimes they get a little, uh, you know, a little um, I won't say the word scared, a little apprehensive because it, it gets complex quick. But all of that ends up in financially optimized building. You're saving all these things, you're squeezing the inefficiencies out, you're making or you're spending less money and in some cases, like the malls are doing, they're actually generating money from their smart building. That's, that's the grand slam. So that's the smart building. Now, going back to your question about CBRE and what they're going to do to the marketplace and the integrators, there is going to be, I think, so much opportunity out there that whether it's CBRE and the other major service providers, um, they are going to need help. They're not going to have skills in every market. And I think the, the answer is this. And I go back to a paradigm that I actually went through. When we went from mini computers to the distributed PCs, I believe there's three states of our industry. Past state, that's the traditional analog, very proprietary one-off system company approach. Then we got the current state, which is open and interoperable, reaching into the old systems, trying to get data and control that we never had before. And then there's the future state, which I said earlier, is going to be IP enabled, at the edge, to the cloud, done. Okay, So we got three states of people trying to figure this out. As, as the integrators back then with the mini computers, they went from mini computers to a PC. Oh, wait a minute, I need to get my P application to my PC, but I still need to access that, that mini computer. So I, I put a NIC card in there. I did 3270 emulation. That was current state reaching back into past state. 
Then what happened? Somebody said, let's develop a, an operating system like Novell and let's connect file servers. And all of a sudden, we didn't need many computers. I think the same thing's happening in our industry. Okay. So the, the message to the integrator is, did the Wang DAC IBM Prime guy who installed equipment lose his job? Sure he did when those companies went out of business. He, he was good at hooking things up. He understood technology. Did he get a job with the new local LAN integrator company that didn't exist a year before? You bet he did. Those who held on to the past lost their jobs. Those who embraced the change had careers as long as they wanted them. Um, uh, I had a teacher once, uh, Marshall Thurber, and he used to say there are two types of change. There's cyclical change, which is like the stock market goes up and down. And your strategy in a cyclical change is, you know, you just try to time the market using the stock market as an example. He also said the other kind of type of change is structural change. And right. a structural change is like when, when, when the uh, car came along, it didn't matter how good a horse and buggy you had, you were eventually going to lose. When the computer came along, it didn't matter how good a typewriter you had, you were eventually going to lose. So uh, the strategy in a structural change is you embrace the change or you die. Would, would you die. say that we are in a structural change vis-a-vis -vis building automation and buildings? We, we, you call it structural. We, we kind of call it transformational. Same okay. thing. Right? Same yeah. thing. Um, absolutely, unequivocally, beyond a shadow of a doubt, with what I get to see every day, going into rooms that people won't see the technologies for a long time because they're just not ready, um, we are absolutely at the cusp of that change. I'll give you a little tactical example. Um, think about uh, what Uber did to the taxi cab companies. Yep. Right? Freaked them out, right? Changing their business model. Well, guess who's going to – that That would be the, 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 the tactical change or the strategic change, you know, the ups and downs, right? They incrementally changed a business model that's been around for 50 years. Now the Uber guys are worried that autonomous cars are going to take them out. <laughs> yeah. That's a transformational change because that's saying your car doesn't need a human being in it anymore. Whether, yeah. whether they be a taxi cab driver or an Uber driver, you don't need a human being, right? Yeah. And so uh, – and, 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 and we look at things like Uber and Airbnb – uh, we got one of those coming in the real estate industry. It's called liquid space, where I don't need to take an office. I can go rent space off my, my phone. So you nailed it. Tactical changes people can kind of adjust to over time. Transformational structural change, it freaks them out. It scares them. But I've, I've been through two or three of these now in my career. You have to embrace it, pure and simple. If you're holding on to that as a, as a controls dealer, that one manufacturer and, and the one system and the, the systems don't talk to each other and, and you don't care that the you know that the HVAC system can access the or needs to access the, the uh, access control or the parking gates for whatever reason then you're going to miss a boatload of opportunity yes well, I, I think you are Jim and, and I think uh, the other thing that Marshall used to say to me is nothing is obvious to the uninformed and uh, so I want to sort of segue into the, to the uh, Ibicon Rocom conference that's coming up here very, very soon. It seems like, uh, speak a bit, if you would, about the missions of Ibicon and RealCom. And, and I would say, from my personal experience, part of it is if you need to get it informed and, and sort of be out ahead of these changes that are upon us, this is the place you can go to do that. Yeah. So we've been uh, thinking about this next generation of smart, open, interoperable buildings, campuses, portfolio cities for 15 years. You could even argue that I've been thinking about it for 35 years, but we won't go back that far. <laughs> so in the early days, right around 2001, we did not have an IBCon. It was just RealCom. And that's where IT and, and, and property management people came to learn about technologies to run their buildings better. So, you know, property management, lease administration, uh, maintenance requests, all the things that it took to operate the building. Uh, and then I think it was 2001 uh, that we started to talk about a little bit about the smart building and then we wrote the article in 2002 and then in 2004 we were told the real innovation was going on around the world we jumped on airplanes and went to tokyo seoul hong kong shanghai beijing kuala lumpur singapore then we jumped to the middle east dubai abu dhabi uh talked to people in bahrain qatar saudi arabia went to europe uh then over to, uh, to australia literally for two years three years scanned the world actually had some events over in dubai looking for innovation on this new paradigm. So uh, probably from about 2.4 to 2.10, 11, the, 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 real co or the smart building conversation was inside RealCom. It was just a track. And then about four years ago, we said, this is getting too big. And P.S., we don't want just the IT people in the room talking about it. We want facilities executives. We want energy executives. We want sustainability people. We want corporate people. 
that that we want hospitals, we want uh, stadiums. The smart building conversation goes beyond just malls and office buildings. So that's when we started IBCon, right? And and it was it proved to be perfect timing. So last three years, uh, you know, picking up momentum. We had a few case studies seven years ago. We had a half a dozen five years ago. Three years ago, we started the best practice showcase. We had 25 of the best buildings in the world. Last year was 35, 37. This year we got 50, and we just have to stop because it can't get beyond 50. We don't have room. So if you look at that adoption curve, you know, two went to four to eight to 16, and now the cat is out of the bag. The smart connected high performance building is not turning around. The case studies went from 25 to 50. I think collectively between pre-conference and in the, in the conference, we got 50, 60 sessions, 100 plus, 120 speakers. Um, and then um, what's happened really interesting on the pre-con day, which you're, you've been involved with now for a couple of years, the cybersecurity forum out of control. We've got, NS, uh, we've got FBI coming, Homeland Security, high-level people from these two organizations coming, maybe even the NSA. We've got a general coming from Israel. Um, we've got the top REITs on, the, on, on panels. We've got the top manufacturers. And the and it's going to be a three-hour session. And the idea there is how do we come together to work together to stay ahead of this? Nobody wants their real estate project in a headline. They don't want to be the ones that were hacked, right? So, so we're saying this is new. Everybody's trying to figure it out. Let's get in a room, all aspects, supply, demand, and try to figure this out. And, and, and it's, it's turning out to be a great event. Then we got the Integrator Roundtable, which you were involved with last year. This is our second year. That's your audience. If you're in this business and you want to figure out what a unified communications infrastructure looks like and, and what choosing you know one of the 100 application software platforms, what it is, how do you, we're going to have end users, big end users sitting on a panel giving advice to them saying, here's what I want you to say when you call me. Here's what my needs are. I got 100 buildings around the country. Can you help me? Um, and, and that's that's going to be the session for an integrator who's been in business 15, 20, 25 years is going to be able to say, I want to come and learn about this new stuff. Back to our conversation at Starbucks in San Diego uh, a while back, uh, you predicted that there would be a lot of changes. 2014 would be a game-changing year, and voila, we had uh, Intel, we had uh, Dell, we had Microsoft, we had uh, a whole lot of new players that really did change the landscape in 2014. What are your predictions for 2015? Right, so um, we do have a good vantage point because we talk about, um, uh, we talk to a lot of people, you know, all year long, and, and we kind of know where they're going. I'd say 2015 is going to be uh, a year of a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say confusion, but, but a, a lot of new entrants. In the last two weeks, I've spoken to five companies that you and I have never heard of before. Wow. That, that when you go to their website, it says building operating system, uh, building management system. I mean, and, and some are legitimately complex, comprehensive systems, and some are dashboards grabbing a few pieces of data, right? So, so the problem is when you go to their website and you look at their thing, it looks like they're the, they're the, the real deal, and it takes time, energy, effort, and the right questions. So we're going to have to get through that. Uh, predictions for 2015, merger and acquisition activity, like you saw CBRE purchase ESI and in the works of purchasing JSI, uh, JCI Workplace, Johnson Controls. That is just the beginning. I think the consolidation that's going to happen at all levels, it's going to happen at, at the integrator level, it's going to happen at the manufacturer level, it's going to happen at the consultant level. On the realcom side, we're, we've just seen some consulting companies be acquired by larger companies. Because what that means is that the bigger companies, they just plunk along, you know, work in the industry uh, as they see fit. And it's all these in it, smaller companies that are doing the innovation. And then all of a sudden, the big company sees that and they say, we have two choices. We can change our culture or we can ingest our culture with a new culture. And that's what you're, I think you're going to see. And, and so the, the big message for 2015, I think, is uh, merger and acquisition activity. And then on the, um, on the owner side, the con security is the biggest issue. Um, and then um, the other interesting thing is figuring out themselves as a real estate company, how capable am I of innovation? And when they see Microsoft dragging 500 million points out of their campus, they now know that it's possible. So they got to go back to their own organizations and say, do I have what it takes to transform my organization? So the real biggest underlying issue is it's no longer about the technology. We have it. we got people to build it and can install it. The big issue now is whether the end user, the real estate community, is ready to adopt and how fast. You guys have made a very, very gracious offer to the Control Trends community. Uh, if you guys sign up here in the next two, three weeks, 
Uh, we'll have a link at the bottom of the page. You'll get a hundred dollars off on the conference. So, uh, Jim, on behalf of the Control Trends community, thank you for that very, very generous offer. Uh, it's worth whatever you have to pay for it, and to get a get a little bogey like that sure does help. So, thank you for that. And Jim, thanks so much for taking the time to be on the show. We, we, you know, Ken and I are big fans of you and 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 Howard and what you guys do and. I tell you what, to our community out there, if there's any way possible you want to be at this show, and if you can't make this one, make the next one, but uh, this is the place you're going to go to get plugged in to find out what's going on. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll throw this final thought out there. I'll guarantee that you're going to come out with two, three things that you had no idea about that are going to positively enhance your business as an integrator, and if it doesn't, I'll give you your money back. Yeah, oh, wow. You can't, you can't, can't mess with that, and for our end users out there that – uh, our property management people, uh, you probably got somebody going to this show, but if, but if if you happen to hear about this and you check with your top level people, make sure they're participating because I think one of the biggest challenges, the customers that we have, Jim, and, and we're sort of selling at a granular level to the integrators that are working with the users, is a lot of time their, their upper management doesn't appreciate the value that's there. So if you fall into that category, make sure to get your, your leadership team so my community leadership team out to San Antonio, Texas is going to be the place to be. Jim that's, our Ron, industry's, that's our industry's biggest challenge yeah. is, is getting the, the people who have got the hands on the checkbooks to understand not the tactical benefits, but the strategic benefits that this all represents. Yeah, absolutely. Jim Young, thank you so much for taking a few minutes to speak with us. Eric, thank you so much for all you do. You guys are awesome. And uh, uh, just keep up the great work. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. Yeah, some great stuff, uh, Eric. I tell you that, uh, Two years ago, when we heard uh, Jim Young first say master systems integrator and what that definition meant and how few that really had that capabilities to do a national portfolio or even a global portfolio, and how Jim told us that one day that they were going to search people out like that. And I think ESI stood, stood to the evaluation process and was selected as a top MSI, what that really meant. Uh, you know, just again, not to overdo the uh, Ivycon, Realcom, I don't think you can overdo it, but the pre-conference events begin June 8th, and you have the Information Systems Smart Building Cybersecurity Forums, the 12th Annual CIO Roundtable, Intelligent Building Boot Camp, Smart Building Integration Summit, the uh, Innovation Summits for the COO, CFO, CAO, and finally the Sustainability Executive Smart Building Symposium. So, I mean, that's just one gigantic plate full of, of possibilities, but Bang for the buck, like you said, I don't think any media could beat or top the Realcom, Ivycom. Well, I can't either. And I tell you what, the fact that uh, Jim Young has given you a money back guaranteed if it's not the best money you spend for the year is, is pretty phenomenal. And, of course, click on the link below to register. They've also offered $100 off discount to our Control Trends community. Get on it. You want to get in the hotel over there. So, uh, hey, just do it. Be a Nike commercial. Just do it. All right, Kenny Smyers, what do we have up next, big dog? Well, next up, we're, we're going to be, uh, this is probably the last week of the Control Trends Awards 2014 Roundup. And here, here we are in May, but that's just how large that show was and how many important people and how many important categories were nominated. This particular post is the 2014 Control Trends Awards Best Technical Support Person of the Year Small Manufacturer, Mr. Lim Hoon Chat from EZIO. Uh, Lim is one of the most knowledgeable, affable guys I've ever met. And he, you talk about passions, you talk about knowledge. Uh, he has several patents to his credit. And... Uh, there's no, no surprise that he won this uh, award. No, no surprise at all. Lim, Lim is also one of the funniest guys you ever meet. He's brilliant. He's personable. Uh, you know, speaking of EZIO, if you haven't met Lim yet, uh, all you have to do is buy some EZIO product. But then you're going to have to pretend like you have a problem because their stuff just doesn't break. So uh, you know, it's very rare you get to call tech support at uh, EZIO. But just call them up and say hello. But uh, Lim will be at the uh, 2000. Uh, is it, I guess it's, yeah, 15, 2015 Worldwide Conference in Paris, France, uh, where you can meet Lim, Mad Mike Marsh, and the rest, as well as best systems integrators from around the world. And, of course, the man, the myth, the legend, and I will be there, too. So, uh, Paris, uh, Kenny's getting ready for his bungee jump off the Eiffel Tower. We talk about that a lot, and he keeps saying, no way, but uh, I don't know. It's going to be a great conference. So, congratulations to Lim. And, Kenny, it, it, it was kind of a theme this week. You're right. We were kind of we – Finishing up some of the video footage we shot from the awards, and uh, what we have up next, Big Dog? Uh, next up, Eric, we had um, seven minutes in control with Mr. Rob Allen. Stromquist's one and only Rob Allen sits down with um, Mike Kaler of KMC to talk about KMC's new Connect Light solution. Uh, he, you know, the near field communication uh, is is one of the coolest things that came out to dress and assign your backnet controllers, even if it's unpowered and still in the box. 
Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about Rob Allen's uh, interview uh, well, with the uh, well, gentleman from KMC? Well, let me put it in perspective. So Rob Allen, of course, is one of the young guns. Uh, he does a show called Seven Minutes in Control because he thinks you and I talk way too much and he believes in brevity. Hell, he probably just texts the show if he could. He's that damn young. But uh, we, we said if he's going to be on the show, he can't text it. He has to do a video. But uh, the KMC uh, uh, whole team came in uh, about three or four months ago and reviewed a bunch of products for us. We shot a bunch of videos. You're right. The near field communication, which is uh, one of their ways to connect and program their uh, controllers, is just a cool technology, Kenny. I mean, basically, you got a smartphone. you got the app. You can just touch the top of the box before you even take it out or um, or power it, and voila, the program's in there. So KMC's just got some great stuff. Uh, and, of course, it's no surprise that the next post is KMC Simply VAV winning the VAV Controller of the Year. So uh, we've got that video footage, and that's Doug Miller accepting the, uh, the trophy for KMC this year. And Doug has been around the industry a long time, like Kenny and I have, uh, one of the truly great great people in our industry really knows this stuff so kmc has a great blend kenny of great products very very innovative technology and great people family run business out of indiana as a matter of fact eric cruder is uh, the grandson of the uh, the founder ken cruder so uh stromquist and company uh, uh, handles handles kmc we're proud to do it it's a great product line and and kenny they've got some stuff coming out that uh, is going to be a game changer regarding the race to the small space, which is another trend we track. So uh, uh, stay tuned to Control Trends. For more well, they're so progressive. Uh, you know, Eric Cruder won the, one of the Young Gun Awards because uh, he's under 30 years old. And he's already uh, an astute member of the community putting in the, uh, the extra time and effort to make these products better. You know, the, uh, just to highlight the Simply VAV, uh, the, you know, it's all the programming's built into the controller. Uh, it uses a pannion sensor to configure all the controller uh, settings to perform the commissioning and let the air balancers do their thing. So it's a really slick product. No, it really is. It really is. And I tell you what, uh, Ken, uh, you know, again, we got so many great people. We got another guest coming up right now. Let's bring him on the show. His name is, well, tell us about our next guest, Kenny. Okay, Eric, I'd love to. Uh, Mr. Ken St. Clair, owner, editor of AutomatedBillings.com. Everybody knows who these guys are and what Ken does. Uh, since 1999, they've been the online magazine and web resource. I mean, they provide the information for the connection community change agents that create the present definition of smart, intelligent, integrated, connected, green, and converged large buildings. Welcome, Ken St. Clair. Welcome, Ken St. Clair. Ken, thanks for taking a few minutes to be on the show with us. Thank you, Eric. Man, last time we saw you, you were up on the stage at the 2014 Control Trends Awards, handing Michael Newman his Hall of Fame award and inducting Mike into the Control Trends Hall of Fame. That was a big time. And, uh, hey, I tell you what, Ken, it's kind of cool. Uh, Mike sent us a photo of himself uh, a couple months later in the snow holding his CTA trophy. So thanks again for, for your help with that. Yeah, actually, I just turned that into an article for the May issue. Uh, it's, uh, it's called, let me just read it. It's called Michael Newman, His Story and Mine. And what Michael sent me was uh, some extra information about uh, all of his evolution at Cornell. And uh, that prompted me to uh, write some history about uh, how I was having a similar experience at the University of Alberta about the same time. So you can read that in the May issue of Automated Buildings. Well, that's right. Automated Buildings coming out is probably hitting the street by the time this goes live. Uh, Tell us, is there a theme for this issue, uh, Ken? Yeah, it's called Becoming an Autodidactic Asset. I always like like, like obscure titles. I think uh, my wife calls me that when she gets upset with me. That's for sure. (laughs) Basically what it is is becoming a self-learning asset, and that's becoming more and more important these days because we got so much to learn. There's so much change going on uh, that we can no longer... Uh, depend on technology we have to depend on the people who are able to learn the technology and so uh, that's what that's all about and uh, it's last month we were talking about how to attract self-learning assets Uh, what came out of that is that uh, we in fact ourselves have to get on with this self-learning because there's a huge skills gap in our uh, assets uh, in the industry, in the fact that we're not um, we're not interacting with social media, we actually aren't learning 
how these new systems are working and how people think and how people interact. And we have to put a lot more effort into that. Okay, Ken, so what are some of the learning tools that people can use? Well, last month we wrote a, uh, basically a, a review on self-learning platforms. So this month I kind of evolved that into social media interfaces with those. And we're starting to see that this platform has to be an integral part of each of our companies, uh, especially integration folks, uh, because they have such, they're inside of such a learning curve. So they need to be able to learn uh, without almost talking. They have to have a database of information that when they need to know about a particular controller uh, information that they can just go there. I guess in in the rude sense, uh, automated buildings started at a platform like that many years ago and followed by control trends doing it and doing it with pictures. Uh, now what we're seeing is that the actual integrators are going to have to uh, create their own internal databases uh, which or platforms that will link to that. No, very, very cool. And, and I think to, now in your, in your sort of research, Ken, is there a certain type of person that does well? In other words, you, met, you alluded to the fact that, um, uh, you know, the screening process when you're hiring somebody, are there, are there certain sort of tells or certain things you can look for that's going to let you know that that individual could be an autodidactic learner? Yes, uh, uh, it, I, in a lot of ways, I think the new folks are uh, better at this than we are because they they learn so much every day. Uh, just new new uh, social media platforms, uh, new ways of doing things, no way, new ways of using the technology. Uh, they're way ahead of us in that stuff. What we need to do is we need to somehow bridge that gap and understand better what they understand and, uh, and give them the leeway to teach, uh, to teach them. But what we need to do is somehow we have to take our old knowledge and get it into these new uh, uh, self-learning knowledge sharing platforms. Okay, Ken, so uh, as Paul Oswald so eloquently put it, uh, the tribal knowledge is leaving the building. So how... What are we going to do to prevent the, the tribal knowledge from leaving the building? What can we do to pass on this tribal knowledge to the young guns? I think if we can engage them in rudimentary social uh, media, that would be a start. Because uh, one thing neat about social media is everything gets documented. Yes. Uh, so so it's, it's good. And it allows uh, a discussion. And I find uh, from my own experience that the people that I interact with on social media are generally younger than the people that I socially or, or interact with, uh, you know, on phones and stuff. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's kind of an amazing uh, change, I guess, in, in, in our learning culture, I think. Our guest is Ken Sinclair from AutomatedBuildings.com. The May issue has just dropped, so be sure to check it out. That's the place the man, the myth, the legend, and I go to get a lot of our information. So, uh, hey, Ken, big news, big news dropped last week with uh, C.B. Richard Ellis acquiring your friend Paul Oswald's company, ESI, as well as a division of Johnson Controls. Hey, did it surprise you, and, and what's your take on it? Yeah, that was a big surprise to me that they would buy uh, two major uh, – Companies, uh, well, piece piece of a major company and uh, and ESI within weeks of each other. I I think for the industry it sends a, a strong message that how important all the stuff we are doing is uh, that these big companies are investing large amounts of money and they feel the future is in it. So I think you've got to be pretty proud if you're. Uh, even a small systems integrator that you were maybe wondering if you were going the right direction. You're going the right direction. This is this is where the action is. Uh, the whole uh, data data as a industry, um, big data, and uh, you and I are of course heading out to Haystack, which is right at the uh, focus of all of this, and it's going to be a great event. It'll be amazing the discussion in the hallways there. Yeah, I tell you what, Haystack is uh, uh, really another interesting trend I think you and I and Ken have talked about in the past, which is uh, 
the sort of the concept of collaborative collaborative competition. I mean, it just seems like because if you look at Haystack, what's interesting about them, Ken, is you got people that compete together during the day coming together to make a better product for the end user. And, and for our listeners who might not know, Haystack is basically a tagging, among other things, is a tagging convention that allows disparate systems to share information in such a way that, uh, like, like Ken said, you're hitting, you're hitting the big data piece. So uh, it's a fascinating group of people, isn't it? For sure, for sure. The other thing we're seeing is uh, a lot of new companies that we've not heard of before coming into the space, coming into the large data space. Um, the uh, Building Robotics has been an interesting group with their uh, their new product called Trender. Uh, I usually don't do product plugs, but uh, I, I'm looking at it as a technology shift as well as a product. Uh, it's it's an interesting, and we've got a good article on that uh, this month uh, about what's some work being done in uh, Washington D.C. Uh, that that is an amazing trend. We're also seeing a large influx of Australian companies, and I believe that's because they've had legislation to uh, to open up uh, their energy performance of their buildings, and uh, we're starting to see that. I believe New York has some uh, uh, some movement in that area, and some of the other major cities. So uh, it's there's some significant moves afoot. All righty, so there you have it, Mr. Ken St. Clair from AutomatedBuildings.com. Uh, the May edition is out. It's a great source of information, and I uh, highly recommend everybody visit at automatedbuildings.com. That's right, Ken. Thanks so much, buddy. Appreciate it. Kenny, I tell you, love Ken Sinclair, a.k.a. Auto. We call him Auto. What, what a great guy, Kenny. Talk about a guy who just has his uh, ear, to the ear, ear to the ground, so to speak, and looks out into the future, but, but has the past as a reference. Uh, he, he's quite an inspiration and, and, and somebody that you and I really sort of rely on, Ken, to sort of keep our feet, our feet grounded. But AutomatedBuildings.com, be sure to check it out. All right, Eric, our next uh, post is a 2014 Control Trends highlight where Niagara AX John Sublet receives the trophy for Control Trends Awards Building Integration and Automation Software of the Year. Well done, Tritium. Well done, uh, Niagara. Well done, John Sublet and Nino DeCosmo. Absolutely, Kenny, and uh, you know Niagara's on the move, Tritium's on the move. Uh, no, you know, sort of not a surprise that they won that software award. It'll be interesting to hear. We, we're hearing good things about uh, Niagara Four, uh, and I know that uh, that Jenny Graves and the team, Nino DeCosmo and John and all of them, just got back from London, England. So uh, Nino was the executive of the year, but was voted the executive of the year by the Control Trends Committee for a large manufacturer. So. Uh, Tritium's doing a lot of good things. Can't wait to uh, maybe get Nino on the show and hear what happened over in London, England. Heard it was a good thing. We were supposed to go cover it, Kenny, but with the new baby, uh, just couldn't could not get a way to do that. But uh, we'll be very excited to see um, you know what what is to come in 2015 with Niagara. So good stuff there. You and I are getting ready to go to uh, Haystack Connect, which will be coming up here uh, shortly. So if you haven't registered for that yet, be sure to check that out. Kenny, let's put a link for registration on Haystack Connect in the show notes, as well, well as the special, again, $100 off vis-a-vis uh, -vis Howard Berger and Jim Young. You can register for uh, Ibicon Realcom on the site as well. And Kenny, I'll tell you what, we got a very, very special treat for our viewers. Uh, as soon as the show ends, stay tuned. You will get to see the premiere of a very special video that uh, we, we employ a gentleman by the name of Vlad. He's European. He's artistic. He's cool. He's hip. He uh, he captured the the two that we commissioned him to capture sort of the spirit of the individual awards. Uh, his first awards with us was last year. He did the awards in New York City with seven minutes and uh, seven minutes of enchantment. He has a new masterpiece that we are you're going to get to see. It's going to premiere here right after the show. So as soon as Kenny and I st uh, sign off, stay on, watch it. Uh, I thought he did a great job capturing uh, the essence of the 2014 Control Trends Awards in Chicago. So as soon as Kenny and I uh, sign off, stay tuned for that. Mike Marston shared another, uh, just uh, again, EasyIO keeps the uh, churning and burning with the new uh, upgrades and, and uh, new improvements to the already formidable FG32. So the uh, he put out a general pu purpose post for everybody in, in the EasyIO community it says, try this in your FG32 with firmware dot three eight. It flies more nicely with the FG32 plus, and now everything that's available is going to be part of this post. 
we'll have the URLs, uh, direct uh, connects links. To, but the, so the CE FCC UL approvals, uh, the draft of the eight apps preparation. Uh, we will do a smaller sequence chiller app, and then we're going to have a lot of information that you can link to it. So all the documents are going to be available. Uh, the uh, awards data sheets, the whole story of EasyIO has been updated, and uh, it's a great post from Mike Marston. Please check it out. Very exciting news from um, from uh, EasyIO. Those guys are always on the move. And, of course, remember, they have their worldwide conference coming up in Paris, France. We will be there. Uh, and speaking of that, be sure to register for Haystack Connect. That's coming up in May. We'll have a link to register for that. Kenny and I will be there as well, as, as well as Ken Sinclair and others. Uh, and then, of course, the big one is uh, Ibicon Realcom in June. And remember, click on the link below. Uh, Jim Mung graciously has offered our Control Trans community $100 off. Just use that link to get the $100 off, and we'll see you in Texas as well. So with that, Kenny Spires, a special thanks to our guest this week, Jim Young and Ken Sinclair. And we will look forward to seeing you soon. So remember, stay in control. Indeed, Eric. D. Kenny Smyers. Take it away, Vlad. Welcome to the 2014 Control Trends Awards. I'm Eric Stromquist, and this is the man, the myth, the legend, the one, the only, Kenny Smyers. Residential Thermostat of the Year. And the winner is Honeywell Red Link. Congratulations! Woohoo! 2014 class of Young Guns. Congratulations, you guys. Schneider Electric SE8000. Siemens BT300. Candigo Smart Structure Light. And Thermacon. Temporary Control. Delta DLS. The Link Springs Link Cyber Pro. FG32. Limo Energy Valve. KMC Simply VAV. DG Logics DG Lux. Sky Foundry. Johnson Controls FX Asset Tool. Niagara AX. Delta Controls. Lim Hoon Chat. Nino De Cosmo Tridium. <laughs> The 2014 CTA PTOC Award goes to Tom Shercliffe and Rob Murchison of Intelligent Buildings. Kiss to the controls guy and goes, you're the one I'm going home with. Then we've done our job, okay? I especially reach out to my employees who did all the work and they make the products and they make those things work and they support you. I love the industry, I love working with you guys, thank you very much.